What's up? This is Tom Froming from TwinsDaily.com. Let's hear from all five managers of the AL Central teams. Uh, you know, teams reporting to camp. We've got managers kind of sitting down, addressing the media, talking about their expectations for the first time. I think the AL Central is going to be better than people think. I think it's going to be a little bit, a little bit deeper than people think. And there are some intriguing storylines with each of these teams and each of these managers. This is a Twins channel, so of course we are going to start out with Rocco Baldelli. Obviously, as the two-time defending division champs, the, the team is looking to sort of stay atop the division and push it to the next level. And here is what Rocco said on his expectations. Talking about it doesn't get us anywhere. We have to start today. We have to put in good work today. Uh, you accomplish that one day at a time. You accomplish it truly one uh, pitch at a time uh, in the way that you go out there and perform. So uh, we, we have a goal of, of winning a World Series this year. That is our goal. Uh, but again, uh, going on about you know how exactly we're going to do that and uh, all of those um, you know all that speculation. Um, I think that takes us actually further away from where we want to go. We have to go out there and prove it on the field. I love that. I absolutely love that. He is going out, you know, and in the most sort of Baldellian way possible <laughs> to where he's sort of qualifying things a bit before and after the statement. But he goes out and says uh, very directly that that is the goal to win a World Series. Yes, you know, I I'm sure there's already people trying to go down to the comments and say, well, you got to win a got to win a postseason game first for you. Thanks. Thanks for, um, you know, clarifying that. Yes, the Twins will need to win a playoff game to win a World Series. This is correct. It, there, there's no rule that says you have to get past that uh, problem first and you can't win the World Series. Like, you, you you can break that streak and win the World Series in the same year. It is it, it is not against the rules. I checked. So Rocco, again, off to this amazing start to his managerial career, this team, you know, back-to-back. -back. They're, they're moving forward. They're trying to go to the next step. They're not talking about, oh, you know, we want to win the division. World Series, baby. World, World Series is what the aim is. You know, he's going to take a day at a time, but... Let's kind of go on to the next two teams in the division. I find these two situations very interesting because you have, you know, two veteran managers, Tony La Russa with the White Sox, Terry Francona with Cleveland, two very different expectations pinned on these teams. And you also have La Russa in kind of an unfamiliar situation, although he has tons of managing experience. This is his first year with Chicago with the White Sox, back with the White Sox. And his comments kind of, uh, well, let, let's take a look. So I think it's really important that we recognize that we have a chance to be really good. But you look around, there are other really good teams out there. And the pressure is going to be for us to be as good as we can be because when you play and you want to get it to October and then beyond, uh, get ready for a lot of tough competition. So number one, I think you got to recognize and embrace it, but you also got to be realistic about all the work ahead. So to me, La Russa is almost a little wary of those expectations and kind of seeming like, hey, you know, yeah, there are some people who think we can win the division. There are some people who are going to say we're World Series contenders, but we need to go out and earn that first before we were going to walk around and act like we're, you know, the team to beat or act like a World Series uh, contender. So he seems a little bit um, like he doesn't really want his team to fully embrace that uh, that hype that they're getting right now. And then on the flip side, you know, so La Russa doesn't seem like he wants his guys to buy into too much of sort of that speculation. Terry Francona is almost like, hey, everybody's counting us out. If our guys see that as motivation, more power to them. So let's see what he says. I mean, you know, how many times do you hear, you know, players say, well, nobody thought we were going to do this, or, you know, the media didn't believe we were any good. You know, I get it. Shoot, if I was picking teams in the NFL, I'd you know, you, could, you only pick one team to be the best, and you got to pick, some, you know, some teams overachieve, some team, you know, things happen, guys get hurt. But I think it's on us to use whatever we can as motivation, and if that's part of it, good. Um, what I care about is us winning, and like I said, whatever players use for motivation, I'm good with. Very interesting, those two veteran managers kind of taking things different directions. Honestly, I think Cleveland is more dangerous than a lot of people are giving them credit for. I think Terry Francona is a tremendous manager. They always seem to get a lot out of their players. 
Um, obviously, not having Lindor around is going to hurt really bad. They've traded away a ton of guys. Um, they're not going away. You know, that team's not going away. So um, whatever kind of chip on their shoulder they can have with expectations and really, you know, um, you can kind of have almost like a major league vibe. The, the movie of like, a, you know, the owners aren't even having our back. Uh, they haven't invested in the team. They're trading away, guys. We're going to go out and prove that we can do this without that stuff, without big signings or, you know, flashy moves uh, that we're just going to be a good baseball team. Uh, so that team's kind of scary to me. Uh, so interesting, those two teams, uh, Chicago and Cleveland. And then I think the, the last two teams in the division right now also are very interesting and both managers as well uh, because, you know, these are both younger guys and Mike Matheny and A.J. Hinch. However, they are both guys who, unlike Baldelli, who's also young, they have they're on their you know multiple stops now. They they were managers one place, not not there anymore. These are their their new places and trying to sort of build something new. And the tone, uh, Mike Matheny sounds very excited, and it's hard to blame him. You know, Kansas City hasn't had a lot to be excited about, and right now there's sort of a shift happening where uh, I think they're kind of looking around and realizing like, hey, we're not. You know, things are going to have to go really well for Kansas City for them to be competitive, but it's not out of the question. Uh, so check out what he said. I just can't tell you the excitement. that You feel a buzz in here. I wish you guys were around here because you would sense it too. You really would. It's not just some sort of, you know, company line here. Um, you, you can tell that, that, uh, that they're they're looking around. We just watched 22 bullpens a few minutes ago just in uh, – the stuff that we're seeing on those mounds, uh, it's, it's advanced, even for some of the young guys. And you put that in place and in line with some of the things that we watched our guys improve to do last year. My favorite line right now, it's a great time to be a Royal. And then AJ Hinch, you know, he, he's taken over a bad team, a team that's in the early stages of the rebuilding phase. He's done this before with Houston. And, you know, a lot of his quotes that he's had have been like, you know, trying to instill the Detroit Tigers, you know, uh, history and, you know, build forward. Uh, but he did make this point about, you know, have the sort of the future is now kind of point here. Let's see. Eventually you want to talk about the results and not just the upside, not just the potential, not just the kind of the prospects that are on their way. And that mindset has to start today with the, with the pitching staff and the catchers that are in camp. So he, he's sort of inviting that, you know, yes, the future is bright. Yes, we have these prospects. We we're building toward the future. We've gotten all these high draft picks. Uh, good things are yet to come, but he's sort of trying to also paint that like, hey, we also want, don't want to just get our teeth kicked in in 2021 all year. So I think he's trying to sort of shift that mindset of that team to where, oh, ho-hum, you know, we have no chance. We're going to be last in the division. Uh, but, you know, we're all individually trying to establish ourselves as major leaguers to well, you know, we're, we're probably not going to contend, but that doesn't mean we can't sneak a few in and build toward potentially being contenders in 2022. You know, if we can have, you know, some momentum going, get that winning vibe going uh, and rolling forward. So, again, I think I think this is an interesting division. I think all five of these teams and all five of these managers have some uh, storylines to follow. And it was uh, fun to see what they had to say about their team's coming into spring training here. So definitely, obviously, we will be keeping a close eye on this. Uh, thanks for checking this out. This has been Tom again. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like. Consider subscribing for more Twins Talk here on YouTube. Thank you.